That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. They turned around, standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright, shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He's sleeping in a manger. This baby would be like a bright star shining in the sky that night. A light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Every year, our Kansas City-based friends over at Hallmark remind us that Valentine's Day is the holiday of love. And I've got to admit, I enjoy Valentine's Day. But I've been thinking this week that the true champion in the season of love is Christmas. It's not just true theologically, it's true experientially. Let me give you some statistics. I didn't know till this week that they actually track the number of marriages in the U.S. every year and when proposals occur. So let's have a little fun. Latest statistics I could find were from 2014. Anybody want to guess what month of the year has more wedding proposals than any other month? It is December. Clearly, anybody want to guess which days of the year have the most wedding proposals. It is Christmas Eve, followed by Christmas Day, followed by New Year's Eve, followed distant fourth by Valentine's Day. The reality is that love has been the story of God from the start. In Genesis, he loves us enough to create us, to make relationship with us. Through the Old Testament, he loves us enough to give us the law to guide us, leaders to rule over us, prophets to warn us when we had wandered away from him. And then into the New Testament, he loves us enough that he says, I still don't quite have their attention. I'll send my son, my best, as the ultimate season of love. That's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Dan Sutherland. I'm one of the pastors here at Westside. If you're joining us for week two of Advent, last week we talked about hope. Today we talk about love. You've got your notes there. Grab it. Write some things down. If you're joining us online, the notes are available up at Speedway here at Lenexa. The big idea for this series is that Advent is a celebration of Jesus' presence. Presence, not P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, although those things are good too. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, his physical presence among us. Advent says Jesus came because he loved us this much. And he'll come again because he loves us this much. And he'll come and do life with us any moment we invite him to because he loves us this much. In our darkness, in our pain, in our chaos, Jesus comes to offer us relationship. Would you write that in? That's what Christmas is about. It's not about religion. It's not about ritual or even tradition. It's about the fact that the God of this universe wants relationship with us. And in the Advent tradition, we celebrate four of the big pieces of God's presence among us. Hope, we talked about that last week. Love, that's this week. Joy, I'll be talking about that next week. And peace, that's what we'll focus on for 47 Christmas Eve services. <laughs> this is what Advent is all about. Here's the simple truth for today's teaching. Jesus' presence brings love. If you can manage to strip the trimmings and the trappings and the traditions away from Christmas long enough to get down to the simple reality, it is that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. It is about a baby 
the ultimate expression of the love of God. I'd like to read a passage today from Luke chapter 2. I call this the shepherd's freak out passage because that's what they do when they get this good news. Would you follow along as I read it out loud? Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this Christ. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. The advent of first love literally refers to the fact that God first loved us. Scripture tells us that our love to him is a response to the fact that he first loved us. And Christmas is the statement to the world that he loves us enough to sin his son. How do we experience that kind of love? How, how do we get a hold of that kind of love? Three things the shepherds did. I think they are still valid for all of us today. Would you write them in? First, you have to accept first love. You have to accept first love. When God says to you, I love you this much, I'm inviting you into relationship with me, many of us run the other direction. We run with, I'm not good enough. Or we run with, I don't deserve this. Or we run with, oh, you don't know me or you wouldn't want relationship with me. And we literally have to understand he wants us to accept his offer of first love. Check out how this worked for the shepherds. They get invited to see the Christ child. Now, this is what I love about Christmas. It's an annual hit the pause button moment to invite us all back to a manger. To invite us all back to a simple moment in time where God says, this is how much I love you. Look at what it says. And this will be the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. How's it going at your house so far this Christmas? We're two weeks out. Tree's up, isn't it? Yeah, gifts bought? Nope, yep, I'm getting both answers. Mostly the guys going no, and some of the women going not yet. Got all the traditions planned out? All the trappings, all the trimmings, all the things that we enjoy? I mean, my daughter told my wife this week, Mom, we have to have dressing at Christmas. It will not be Christmas if we don't have dressing. I mean, it's amazing how the trimmings and the trappings and the traditions become important to us. And I'm all good with that. I love them all. But some moment in Christmas, we're supposed to hit the pause button long enough to say, wait a minute. I've been invited to the Christmas party. I've been invited to the birth of all history. I've been invited to the Christ child. The way we do Christmas in America invites us to craziness. But God in the midst of it says, I want to invite you to Christ. I want to invite you to him. But not only do they get invited, but they choose to accept the invite. Would you write that in? They choose to accept the invite. Now let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. 
I've invited a group of church planters to come to my house tomorrow night. Mary and I are having a Christmas get together for them. Church planters, a guy that's crazy enough to try to plant a church where no church exists. They start from nothing, and they are my heroes in the faith. I champion them because I love them and enjoy hanging with them. But I'm telling you what, these guys can't RSVP worse squat. (laughs) I mean, I sent them an email saying, hey, we're having this night for you guys. Couple answered. I sent them another one that said, you better get saved and answer my first email. Couple more of them answered. I mean, I'm not going to know for sure until they show up. Check out the fact that these shepherds drop what they are doing and head to Bethlehem. God's invited us, let's go. Angels have shown up, let's go. This doesn't happen every day, let's go. They don't let the busyness keep them from the best part of the season. We gotta accept first love. If you're sitting here today and you're thinking, maybe for the first time, I don't know if I believe God loves me. Can I assure you? He does. If you're feeling like you don't deserve it, can I assure you? You don't. If you're feeling like you're too big a mess, can I assure you? You are. He still loves you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you're a mess, but God still loves you. Tell him. Come on. You're a wreck. God loves you. Christmas is about accepting his first love. Secondly, it's about experiencing first love. We not only need to accept it, we need to experience it. This is not mental agreements. Many of us think that following Christ is simply mentally agreeing with who he is. Yeah, the baby came. Yes, he lived a perfect life. Yes, he died for me. Yes, he was raised for me. Yes, I believe. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's more than mental agreement. You see, I believe all of us have to make the journey. Would you write that in? Following Christ for most of us is a journey. It's not just a one-time decision. It's a one-time decision followed by bunches of decisions that we're gonna continue to make the journey. Notice what it says about the shepherds. They came with haste. Would you circle with haste? Now, I want to encourage you. Shepherds were not the brightest, fastest people in Jewish society. If you didn't have an education, you could always be a shepherd. If you weren't too good with people, you could always hang out with sheep. If you liked something that was pretty slow paced, pretty laid back, hang out with a bunch of sheep, move them around once in a while, the shepherd thing wasn't a bad gig. But they get this invitation and they respond with haste. Corinthians tells us today is the day of salvation. And yet I'm amazed at how many times we'll have what I call one of those Jesus moments during Christmas when we get drawn to him and we realize how awesome it is that he loves us and we quickly dismiss it saying, I don't have time for this. I got too much to do. I got people coming over. I got things to get done. And we literally postpone eternal business. Can I encourage you this Christmas? Don't postpone the stuff that really matters. The eternal stuff matters. I've always wondered what happened to the sheep. (laughs) Inquisitive minds want to know. I mean, it's the middle of the night. And the shepherds go, these sheep are bedded down. They're fine. We got a chance to see God. How often do you get to see God? Forget the sheep. Let's go. And for some of us, that's precisely what we need to do this Christmas. Forget the stuff that's in the way. Let's pursue God. Let's see the Christ child. Let's make the journey But we also not only need to make the journey, we have to experience the Christ. Would you write that in? They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. I want to see the video of this. I'm convinced God has video of all this stuff. 
we get to heaven, I want to see the overhead video of this. I want to see the shot where it shows the shepherd's face as they walk up. And sure enough, they find a baby lying in a cattle trough. That's not an everyday thing. Exactly as God told them. And they experience the Christ. The first time I experienced the Christ was December 2nd of 1973 at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Friday night. My youth pastor had confronted me with the gospel and had said, Jesus loves you this much. It's time for you to do something about it. And I had laid in bed awake that night till two in the morning, something I did not do then and I don't do often now. And finally rolled out of bed and prayed the most irreligious prayer anybody's ever prayed. I don't even know if you're real God, but if you are, here I am. Jesus, I give myself to you. I've messed my life up. Let's see what you can do with it. And I got up changed the next morning. 30 seconds of surrender changed everything. A week ago, Friday night, I again had a night when I could not sleep. I don't have many of those. My wife says I have no conscience <laughs> that I can sleep through anything. Pretty much true. But it was Friday night a week ago, and I went to bed at my normal 11.30, 11.45 time, and sleep just didn't come. And I've learned over the years that if I'm not sleeping, God usually has something to say to me or something I need to talk to him about. So I just get up and use the time. So I get up and I go out to the garage and I light my little butane heater and get my chair time spot all laid out. And I sit there from about 12.30 to about 2 o'clock just enjoying God's presence but not hearing a thing. And finally about 2 that morning, December 2nd this year, as I get up and head to bed, I hear the Lord whisper in my spirit, you remember what you did 44 years ago tonight? You remember what you did 44 years ago right now? That's why I've got you up. For you to experience me again. Wow. Changed my life then. Still changes my life now. That is what Christmas is about. It is about accepting his first love, but it's also about experiencing his first love. Thirdly, it's about sharing his first love. It's human nature that when you experience something good, you tell people about it. You notice that? You go to a new restaurant, you have a great experience, what do you do? You tell people. You go to a good movie, it's a great experience, you know, clean, entertaining. You can take the kids, you tell folks, it's awesome. It is human nature to share with others the good things we have experienced. So what happens with the shepherds is they start telling others. Are we doing that? They start telling others. I mean, it's amazing. I'll tell a total stranger a good place to eat. I'll tell somebody I hardly know about a good movie to go see, but I'm reluctant to tell them about the best news of all. We have made this really, really easy for you this year. This card is in your bulletin. Keep your notes. We're not done. You know why this card's in the bulletin? One, because I can't remember when all 47 services are. Two, because it makes it so easy to invite someone to hand it to a friend and say I wish you'd come do an hour with me and we could celebrate Christmas together at my church here's all the times I'll go to any service that works for you we could go out afterwards I'll buy lunch which one's good hand it to them I've had a stack of these in my truck that I've already gone through because it's just too easy. 
if we have experienced something good, it is human nature to tell folks what we have experienced. Look what it says. Now, when they had seen him, the Christ child, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Who are you going to tell? Who will you invite? If you've got in-laws in town, I know you're inviting them. You want a break. <laughs> Who else? Who can you invite? The other way we share first love is we start living changed. Years ago, I was trying to add a ceiling fan in my garage, and I managed to get a hold of the 220 current from the washer and dryer in the garage instead of the 110 current to the electric outlets. It was a moving experience. <laughs> One I will never forget. It's impossible to have a real encounter with the living God and not be changed. It's impossible. In fact, if you think you've had a real encounter with the living God and your life hasn't changed, you didn't have a real encounter. It says, then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. It's been 2,000 years, and I guarantee you, these shepherds are in heaven going, have I told you what happened to me? Have I told you about that angel scaring the hooey out of me? Showing up, telling me a baby was born, and then we go, and the baby's there? And I saw the baby, and it was like the hair on the back of my neck stood up because I realized I was looking at God, and I experienced God. When you have had that experience, you are changed. And I love the fact that Christmas is an annual reminder. Slow down. Celebrate the child. Celebrate the change. That's why it's worth four weeks of our attention in an Advent series. That's why it's worth extra Christmas Eve services. This is why it's worth inviting our friends. You saw a video earlier today about Mission House and about Avenue of Life. They both got started because somebody's life had been changed and they wanted to share it with others. Mission House was started by a young man named Sam McCord. Wasn't then, but today, he's my son-in-law. Decided he loved downtown Kansas City, Kansas, enough to buy an old beat-up house and renovate it and turn it into a training center where people could learn to share their faith in urban settings. He had experienced Christ. He had to do something about it. Avenue of Life started because people like Matt Adams and Desiree, the director, had been so changed by Christ that they wanted to move into a tough neighborhood and share the love of Christ with others, sharing how their lives had been changed. And today, it has helped thousands of people. Those two places, literally together, form a living example of how a neighborhood is being physically and spiritually transformed by the love of Christ. Because when you've experienced something good, you tell people. And when you've had a 220-volt hookup with the living God, it changes your life forever. So I want to ask you a very important question, and I want you to keep your notes in your hand after you have filled in the next three blanks, because I want you to do something with it. Where are you in your journey with Christ this Christmas? Nobody can answer this but you. One of these three has got your name on it. Would you check the one that's got your name? I need to accept his love. If you're being just drawn in for the first time to the love of God, accept it. He loves you just like you are. Or I need to experience his love. I've, I've got the facts, but I need to experience the Christ child. Or thirdly, I need to share his love. I know I've accepted and I know I've experienced him, but I, I need to tell others about it. I need to live different. 
would you put a star or a chick by the one of those three with your name on it? Now, if none of those are ringing your bell, you really need Christmas. Because one of those ought to be ringing your bell. For me this year, it's about going back and experiencing his love again. Just like the first time. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. And Speedway, at Lenexa, online, wherever you are, I'm going to ask you to bow your head, close your eyes. You don't have to do that to pray, but sometimes it just helps you focus. If you'd like to experience the love of Christ today, you could pray with me this prayer. I'm going to pray out loud. If you need to re-experience it, pray this prayer along with me as well. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming to show me how much you love me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for forgiving me for all that I've done wrong. I give myself back to you today, Jesus. I want to experience all of you, all of your love this Christmas. Would you touch me right now and make me different? This is my prayer in Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me just now, that's twice as much prayer as I prayed 44 years ago. It's enough to change your life. If you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to do something. I want to ask you if you're in one of our live locations, grab that Connect card that's in your bulletin. It's the part that's perforated that you can tear off. Would you go ahead and tear that off? And there's a place there that says, I started a relationship with Jesus under my next step today. Check that, put your name on it, put it in the box on the way out. We'd love to know so we can pray with you. If you're online today and you prayed that prayer, there's a button that you can check as well to tell us that you've experienced Christ today. If you need to talk with somebody, our prayer partners will be down front. Next week, we're gonna talk about joy. I promise you we will laugh and we will experience joy together. I'm already looking forward to it. Here's my blessing as we go today. May we experience the Christ this Christmas. His love, his hope, his joy. And may we be different for it. All God's people said, love you guys. See you next week. <laughs>